Good afternoon, everyone. Really nice to be here. Um, our role in this for the next few minutes is to talk about uh, the potential for digital twins, enterprise digital twins, and how that might impact as a disruption um, as a digital technology into manufacturing. So my name's Sue Williams. I'm Managing Director of Hexagon Consultants. Um, and this is Matt Tootle, who works for a company called Air Agility, who are a software provider specialising in enterprise digital twins. So just to give you a little bit of context of this as a double act, we've recently been working with a customer who is looking to really move on their digital journey around man manufacturing and maintenance work. And I've, uh, Matt and team have been providing the technology and I provide and work on behalf of the client to make sure that they get what they want out of the model and also to support on the change program that needs to go alongside that to make sure it's a successful implementation. So recognizing we're short on time. So we'll start with what is a digital twin? Um, I think there is a raft of different perceptions, definitions or otherwise, and I think it can mean many different things to different people. So uh, you might use it in form of design, uh, whether it's a supply chain or a product or a system. You might use it for maintenance or management of an activity or a machine or a piece of equipment. You might use it to optimize either a system, a tool or equipment. You might use it at the component level. You might get all the way up through to system or enterprise or a process. So, and then when we start to move up to enterprise and system level, you might have individual digital twins down at the component level, which are feeding in. So it's, it can operate at many different levels together, individually or otherwise. And then you start to look at the level of integration. So you might have something where it could be a, a manual data flow, so you're controlling that data flow all the way through to automated. And then you may be doing that on a live update, so it's continually feeding the model, or you might use it in a more project-based or strategic analysis environment where you're doing that on a more periodic basis. So again, lots of different ways that this technology and capability can be used. And the kind of use cases, and Matt will go into a little bit more detail on specifics, but you might use it for monitoring either a system performance or a machine, some risk assessment, resilience, how resilient is your supply chain, for example. You can test that through the use of Enterprise Digital Twin. Um, sustainability, Matt will talk again a bit more about how you can use it for carbon uh, monitoring and management and also decision support and strategic analysis, I guess the traditional places that you might expect a digital twin to appear. So we're going to talk more specifically about enterprise digital twins. So what we're talking about here is a scenario where you've got multiple elements that you're trying to assess and manage. So it's, a, it's, it's looking at something that can become quite a complex environment, and you're looking at all of the different input, inputs and then balancing that off against a range of maybe your target service levels, your uh, revenue and budgets that you're trying to achieve, the customer service levels that you're trying to manage. Maybe you're trying to introduce a brand new product or move into a new geography. So it's all about bringing multiple levers and uh, parts of your organization into a model and enabling you to model that in a way that um, will hopefully uh, get you somewhere further forward without necessarily wasting a load of money or taking a massive risk. So how does it work? Um, at the top half of this diagram, effectively, what you become, you've got a, a loop of you've got a set of requirements, you're taking that through some form of selection process in terms of your options of how you supply those requirements or support those requirements. You're taking that through scenario modeling and then you can go around that loop as many times as you like in the sense of the digital twin enables, certainly with modern capacity and capability, uh, we were doing a version of this sort of 20 years ago, but my goodness, it took a long time and we couldn't do very many scenarios. Now, we can get this set up and running so you're doing scenarios in a very short time frame. You can make adjustments to your models and suddenly you're into really being able to assess the opportunities and the flexibility and the constraints of whatever it is that you're trying to assess. Once you've then got through that uh, to the point where you're able to make informed decisions, then you can take that through into your physical world. 
Um, you're going then into your implementation. And again, I think it was referenced earlier, the other key part of this kind of capability is the change program that goes with it. There's no point having really nice shiny capability if then nobody does anything different or you continue to operate in a, in a very traditional way without responding to that change. And then you're moving back into your measure and your feedback loop. And depending on what it is you're modeling, off you can go again. Off around the loop of continuous opportunity to optimize or redesign or manage or maintain your operation. So hopefully that gives you a, a bit of a feel. So I'll hand over to Matt and hand over the control of the, of the clicker. Thank you, Sue. So as, as Sue said, you know, there's a lot of different sectors at the minute that are really empowering and sort of harnessing the use of the digital enterprise twin. And you know, those can vary between manufacturing, retail, aerospace and defense and supply chains, all geared around how do they improve their overall operations. Now, whilst there's a very broad sector um, and, and, and spread of the sectors that are using the technology, you know, the, there are many commonalities across those, across those sectors. And the biggest one that we see is that the organisations are, are data rich. You know, there's masses and masses and amounts of data, but they're very information poor. So they don't actually know how to use that data, that data to get the most insights and, and benefits out of that to improve their organisation. So by bringing all that data together through an enterprise digital twin, it allows those users to enhance the decision making process, optimise their outputs and essentially make smarter decisions faster, which are all underpinned by data rather than just gut feel experience of the organisation. So one of the main challenges that you know, many organisations face, especially in the current climate, is you know, how to effectively optimise those outputs, whether it's manufactured goods, logistical routes, asset management, flight routes, etc. if they're an airline. And I guess the output of adopting the digital twin approach means that they can see those benefits in such a reduction of cost, greater asset yield, optimization of their enterprise, but ultimately that better understanding of how their operations and environment works. And as Sue said, and many speakers have said today around the kind of um, social and economic and environmental impacts, a lot of organizations right now are really keen to understand their carbon impact, carbon footprint, and how they can you know, improve that, change that, and, and, and get to a net zero target. So, you know, you've got organisations such as airlines who are trying to reduce the, the, the flight paths and maybe be as efficient as possible. You've got multi-facility multi manufacturing sites, you know, understanding how they try and get the, um, the, the minimum carbon impact across their, across their environment. Now, with an enterprise digital twin, you can actually allocate predicted carbon usage to every single part of your enterprise and then start to extrapolate that forward uh, to, to ultimately give you a predicted carbon usage in the next two, three, four, five, fifty 50 years. But also because of the technology, you can then start to implement potential mitigations and change policies to understand actually if I made this change to my carbon footprint, what would that then, then do to my overall output? So that's one of the real benefits, as Sue said, around the kind of you know, enterprise digital twins and what organisations are using for, it's that ability to quickly test multiple changes uh, across, across the entire enterprise and not just see that, that single output. So, a little bit about Hexen and their agility, I guess. So you've, you've heard us talk about uh, enterprise digital twins. Um, their agility is, is, is primarily focused on agent-based uh, enterprise digital twins. So I guess first question that everyone always asks is, is what is an agent? <laughs> so an agent, imagine you've got your organization sat around a table and you've got all your different organizations, all your different people, supply chain operations, manufacturing um, around that table. And you know some of those agents are intelligent, uh, some are autonomous, some like to interact with others, some don't like to interact with others, but ultimately they're all highly suited to that role that they're in. Agent-based AI uh, essentially replicates that entire organization table of people and, organi and, and, and individuals, but in a digital realm. And the video that will be playing in a second kind of shows our overall subset um, of agents within the supply chain digital twin that, that we've created in, in, in partnership with Hexagon. As you can see, when it eventually presses play, well, I don't think I can press play on this one. Nope. You press play, please. Oh. 
big reveal. There we go. Power of, a, <laughs> power of an area rates approach. So as you can see, around the circle, they are there. they're all the different agents that we've got within the supply chain digital twin. They cover everything from resource, people, manufacturing, operations, um, logistics, supply chain, and there are multiple different subsections within those top level groupings. So that, that just details and shows exactly how granularly we can get into the operation to make sure that that digital twin is a, is a fully functioning representation of your environment. And the key thing about the agency is that they're all integrated. So if you make you know, a small change, whether in, you, know, you can see there that we're hovering over the asset base, make a change in one of those agents because of the integration of the approach of the enterprise twin, that, auth that, that change is automatically rippled through and the impact of that change can then be seen across subsequent environments in a single activity, a single scenario, a single model, rather than the historic stovepipe approach of, I've got to make a change to my supply chain, right, I'll go and set a meeting with manufacturing in two weeks' time and see what their impact is. It's all done automatically. Now, obviously, the main benefit for us of having this approach with the integration and the touch point is not just that one big focus of lever, it's the, it's the um, addition of the culmination of changes across those little tiny uh, pieces of your organisation that all add up to that 1%, 2% that can and ultimately enact into a, a huge change and improvement across your organisation. And we've seen in practice in some of the large defence organisations we've worked with, historically, you know, I'm from defence myself, the, 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 the background is that it's very stovepiped, you know, the integration is, is, and data is all collated across individual spreadsheets, tool sets, models, etc. With the, the, the Enterprise Digital Twin approach, we've had multiple stakeholders in the room, and because we can run scenarios two or three times um, in a couple of minutes, those people then buy into the program, buy into the plan, and, and essentially leave the room all fully behind the same approach, and you're not having to then reconvene at a later stage. So conscious of time, and we're probably going to stand in where some people, someone's, uh, people's lunch is, I'd just like to leave you with a kind of little bit of an analogy. Um, and I always got you know, hot back to my days as an apprentice and you know, the analogy was given to me of keep it simple, stupid. So um, imagine, I want you to imagine that you're, you essentially run a laundrette. You know, you're a starting small business, you're a new business, and as you start to grow, things don't necessarily run as smoothly as you'd like. So you start to see bottlenecks and there's issues within your laundrette. Now, as a conscious owner, you've got data that says, right, I know my staffing levels, I know what my machine servicing is, I know where my peak times are, when I'm quiet, when I'm busy what potential usage patterns there are, and essentially how much you know, detergent I'm going through and, and, and fabric softener and like. Now, that data traditionally is, is stored in, in, in individual spreadsheets or tool sets, whatever it may be. Now, how powerful would that be then if you could bring that data on all the feeds and the different information into a single solution that essentially gives you that insight into the optimum number of machines that you would need based on your demand you know, the products and services that you could offer to the customers, but not to, to just to meet the expectations of that customer, but then exceed that as well. And essentially planning your service requirements, seeing the, the quieter periods when you can then implement those in, so you're not affecting customer experience. And, basic, and the last point is understanding your quieter periods and how to maximize these, doing promotions, doing different pieces. All of that is possible with, a, with an enterprise digital twin. So the final point is that the the, an enterprise digital twin just speeds up your ability to understand the consequence of change, whether it's good or bad, and removes that, that kind of gut feel, experience-led that you, you end with.